Good morning. Today, I'm going to show what I do for motorbike maintenance in order to, in my opinion, completely prevent any risk of rust at all. That is, riding through the winter or whatever situation you're in. I've been doing this for about 12 years, ever since I started riding, riding all year round in the saltiest conditions, and I've never, and I'm proud of this, I've never had any rust on any bike I've ever owned. And this, this is a big reason for it. GT85, it's, it's a magic spray and it is the mechanic's best kept secret. It's got something in it called PTFE that coats onto any metal surface, it lubricates and it pretty much prevents rust. So here's what I do to protect my bike from all of the elements. I've taken the tank off purely because I was slightly changing my uh, phone mount setup, but it's also a good opportunity if you do take it off that you can get into all of the nooks and crannies. So here's what I do. Spray everything apart from, of course, the brake disc and anywhere near the brakes, but just literally spray everywhere, including, importantly, underneath. Get down really low, spray everywhere. Don't be shy with it. I mean, just have a look at this. That is rust from two days on the motorway, the brake discs. That's what, that's what these salty elements can do. This, this is why I love it. It cleans a bike, so if you live in a flat, you don't need to worry about having a hose. It also lubricates all of the moving parts, so they last longer. And of course, it gives everything a nice shine, whether it's the metal or the plastic. Everything gets a brilliant shine with this. It does. It does everything. It's pretty much the one thing I always use on my bike and always have done. A cloth. Spray everywhere. While that's just soaking in everywhere for ten for five minutes or so, wipe down the bits that you don't want to spray because they're too close to the tires and the brakes. I'll show you one more bit as well. Just on the top of the tank. So if you've got the tank off, just spray in all those bits that don't usually you know, get to see any of this maintenance and protection spray. All the wires, everything, doesn't matter. I do this in the summer as well. Ideally once a month or so because it cleans the bike. So in the summer I do it more because it cleans the bike. And in the winter, yes, it cleans the bike, but also protects it from rust. So it can do everything, especially living in a flat, like I said. It means you don't need to worry about having a bucket, water, carry all of that stuff down. This will do everything and it's quite fun it's kind of therapeutic i quite like it especially on a sunday let's say monica and i will go to the coffee shop grab a coffee well it's a very proud moment when you clean your bike and you know it's protected so you can use it this allows you to use your bike during the winter without any real worry about rust you know use it for what it's made for, you know, as much as possible. Bikes love to be used. And the treat for cleaning it is a coffee and a cake. Finally, all over the tank. And watch this, it will give it the most beautiful shine. You know what I do with the tank? I usually get a fresh cloth out. <laughs> Just because this is the bit everyone sees. Oh, look at that, look at that. And all of the grime just wipes off so easily. Oh, it looks like new, doesn't it? Beautiful. Wow. Done. Put the seat back on. Monica and I are gonna head off. Head off for a coffee, but that now is the Bonneville sorted for winter. There won't be any issues with that at all. And that is pretty much exclusively thanks to GT85. So if in doubt, go and get a bit and just spray it all over your bike. I love this stuff.
weather gets cold everyone just desperately runs in to uh, the pubs the restaurants the cafes as quickly as possible I think they had to queue up for 15 minutes to get a sandwich it's so popular in here Ipswich food hall if you're in the area it's a lovely way to spend a Sunday I'm curious do you ride in the winter and do you tuck your pride and joy away for all of the cold salty months or do you do what I do? Do you just spray it down with a whole load of maintenance spray and just actually ride your pride and joy through the winter with all of the grit and the salt and everything like that? I, I honestly have found that I've never had a problem with it, but I do know a number of people who have a winter hack, but there are two different sides to the argument of a winter hack, and bear, bear with me here, because you can go out and buy a winter hack, and let's say that would be about... £2,000, maybe £3,000 depending on your budget, but you still have to ensure that winter hack, you have to tax it and you have to do the standard maintenance to it. Is it more cost effective? Just use your pride and joy through the winter, spray it religiously, let's say once every two weeks or once a month with maintenance spray, completely cover it, you'll protect it from rust. Yes, you may have to change a few more bits every now and then because you do more mileage, but you have that extra money because you haven't spent money on the winter hack. I'm probably more down that line, using your pride and joy and just spraying it religiously as opposed to going out and buy a winter hack. But I'm curious, let me know your thoughts. I mean, I remember when I was younger, passed my test at 25, 
and I used to have the night shift at B&Q, which is a hardware warehouse. So every night I'd have to head off at 7.30 p.m. And it was a half an hour ride every single day to this B&Q warehouse. And I'd always spray it down, so rust was never an issue. But God, I just remember the cold starts with these old car bikes. I always had to park it on a downhill and slope. what bike did you have at that time? Suzuki RF600, right there. Uh -huh. And it was like using a bobsleigh. I'd have to park it down a hill and it would never start. So I'd have to run with it as fast as I could down the hill, build up enough <laughs> momentum. Love to see that. Jump on, quickly turn the key and push the start button. And that would work 30% of the time. And bear in mind, I was in full winter gear at the time, <laughs> dripping buckets. And if it didn't start the first time, I'd have to push it up the steep hill, just sweating like I'd just run a marathon and then jump back on again. And sometimes it'd be half an hour before it would start and I'd be quite close to tears sometimes, it's pathetic. <laughs> and then I'd start riding, and it was about minus one a lot of the time, and I didn't have the money to buy winter gloves. Uh, and I was sometimes actually crying or screaming into the helmet, just no, no, because I was so cold. I remember I tried once to put on, you know the, the mechanics gloves, the latex gloves? Mm -hmm. Put those on under a set of gloves, thinking, well, that would stop the wind chill 100%, it didn't work, it's pathetic. Yeah, good memories though, really why, good memories. Why wouldn't you just take the bus? Just? Take a bus. Take the bus, uh, because I finished work at one o'clock, bus is oh, stopped, okay. the only way I can get there is by bike. So many happy memories, but my God, riding in the cold without the right gear, hell, absolute hell. Well, I like to pretend <laughs> that this was me doing the shopping, but I mean, this is all Monica. We have got a candle, handmade in Suffolk, very nice, and oh, I love those some eucalyptus. Yes. Do you know, it's really nice. There's so many little independently run businesses all kind of congregate, congregate in this area. And also, I love it. Everyone seems to be in their Sunday best in there. Beautifully dressed, everyone. It's a nice place, really like it. So there you go. Monica, you've got your Christmas treats, a candle <laughs> and eucalyptus. Yes. Do you know, I think this is perfect timing. I've just felt a few drops of ice cold rain. So it's good timing. Monica, oh, have we you, don't have panniers. Have you planned on how to carry this back? Oh, I forgot that we don't have panniers today. Okay, this will be an experience. It's okay. It's well, I say it's short, okay, we'll manage. It's just a short ride. It's, uh, I'll have to leave that up to you, obviously. Okay, it's fine. Just squeeze it between mm -hmm. us. Okay, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. It feels... Brilliant. Being back in the UK, I'm now completely acclimatised to this freezing cold weather. Thank you so much everyone for coming along and we'll see you all in the next one.